Good morning and welcome to worship today. Glad to see each and every one of you with us this morning. A quick second, I want to I wanna take and say thank you for allowing Michael and I and the kids space to, to go to Texas and be home for the holidays and simply just be present with family. Well, and as we've exited this holiday season and, and prepared our hearts and minds for the birth of Christ, well, we enter into a new year. And with a new year, we, we look at the last one. We look at 2018 and begin to reflect on where we were and what happened. And then we begin to look at 2019 and we begin to plan. We begin to make resolutions and goals, things do we, that we want to do to better ourselves, to have a better 2019 to simply be more present, to be with our family and friends, to to be stronger, to be healthier, to be spiritually strong. All of these things that we we look at moving forward into a new year, kind of turning over a fresh page. And when I think about New Year's, I think about the book of Ecclesiastes. See, Ecclesiastes is written very much in a way that somebody's writing a journal. Somebody who's trying to figure out life, just simply writing down their thoughts. See, the writer jumps from topic to topic and throws around phrases like pointless and chasing after the wind. But ultimately, the writer is trying to express that nothing in this life is permanent, but to simply embrace this life simply as it is, one day at a time. To work hard and to enjoy what we do, to know that there will be ups and downs, but to remember that God is there. And so this got me thinking. This got me thinking about the new year and how we approach it with the best of intentions, with our resolutions, with our goals to to be better, to be more healthy, to be more spiritual, to go travel more, to do this or that. Well, see, the dangers in these resolutions that that we start at the beginning of the year, well, is our expectations. Sometimes our expectations are way too high. Our intentions are good. But we want these goals, these resolutions to instantly make us better to instantly throw us into something brand new, to instantly learn a new skill or learn a new hobby or learn something that takes a lifetime sometimes to learn. And so our expectations, well, they they burn us out. When life gets in the way, well, sometimes we miss out. Sometimes we have to set these new resolutions aside and we feel shame and we don't pick them back up because, oh, we can't do it. We get burned out. Life gets in the way, and in church, that's okay. It's okay because there's a time for everything, and it's making room for that time to accomplish this goal, but also for life to get in the way and to interrupt the things that we're doing, because it's going to happen. Ecclesiastes 3 tells us that very thing. It says there's a season for everything, a time for every matter under the heavens, a time for giving birth and a time for dying. A time for planting and a time for uprooting. A time for killing and a time for healing. A time for tearing down and a time for building up. A time for crying and a time for laughing. A time for mourning and a time for dancing. A time for throwing stones and a time for gathering stones. A time for embracing and a time for avoiding embraces. A time for searching and a time for losing. A time for keeping and a time for throwing away, a time for tearing, and a time for repairing, a time for keeping silent, and a time for speaking, a time for loving, and a time for hating, a time for war, and a time for peace. See, it's in the first part of the scripture that we find life itself. If we think back to our own lives, we can truly see that there is a time for everything, Do we find these good moments? We find moments that, well, they don't make our heart. They make our heart heavy. And then we find those ugly moments that we simply wish we could forget. This verse captures the fullness of life, all of it. And right smack in the middle of it, we find God. But for us, what does it mean to embrace a time for every little thing. See, church, we're about to turn the page on, a, on 2018 and open a new page on the 2019 and 365 days of new possibilities. 
And we can't possibly plan for every single moment. And Ecclesiastes reminds us that rather than planning for every life event or simply trying to manufacture or make these things happen, right? We are encouraged to take life simple. One day at a time. No over-planning or, or even under-planning for that matter, but to continue living in a way that embraces all that life has to offer. Every bit of it. See, church, we just spent the last four weeks preparing our full selves for the birth of Christ, which means we were preparing ourselves for the fullness of life, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because it's all going to be there. And as we've prepared for Advent, we can see that we will find love, hope, peace, and joy within every little bit. And it's this rest of the section that brings it around, that reminds us that no matter how much we plan or hope things will happen, it takes work on our end to embrace and enjoy this life. Here, verse 9. What do workers gain from all their hard work? I have observed the task that God has given human beings. God has made everything fitting in its time, but has also placed eternity in their hearts without enabling them to discover what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there's nothing better for them but to enjoy themselves and do what's good while they live. Moreover, this is the gift of God, that all people should eat, drink, and enjoy the results of their hard work. Church, there is a time for everything. There is a time for all of this and more in our lifetime. From start to finish, we will see the good and the bad and the ugly that this life has to offer. If we take life simply one day at a time, and we continue to work our way closer to God, closer to our neighbor and closer to ourselves, if we take the next year, the full year to do that, I think we'll see something different. I think we'll see something different instead of making resolutions and goals that we may or may not keep, rather than making promises and burning out. I encourage you to simply remember there is a time for everything. 2019 holds a day and a space for everything. Make room for it. All of it. There are going to be some things we don't want to make room for. But Ecclesiastes reminds us there's truly a time. There's truly a season for everything. Make room for it. Because remember that God is there with us. And the gift that God brings to us is life, the fullness of life. And the reward is that people, us, as we live the fullness of life, are called to eat, to drink, and to enjoy the results of our hard work. In other words, work hard, church. Work hard at loving God. Work hard at loving your neighbor and simply enjoy this life that is before you one day at a time. We pray these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.